So in the last lesson, we learned that ethanol metabolism leads to large increases in NADH. And with the alcohol dehydrogenase reaction, this leads to an increase in cytosolic NADH. Now with the aldehyde dehydrogenase reaction, which occurs in the mitochondria, this leads to an increase in mitochondrial NADH. And finally, ethanol metabolism eventually leads to increases in acetyl-CoA as well. So the increases in NADH and increases in acetyl-CoA from ethanol metabolism lead to specific consequences and problems in other metabolic pathways. And we're going to get into what those metabolic pathways are in a moment. So since ethanol metabolism leads to an increase in NADH, a decrease in NAD plus to NADH ratio, and an increase in acetyl-CoA, what are the consequences to other metabolic pathways? Well, some of the consequences are that it causes dysregulation in glycolysis, and some of those dysregulations can lead to lactic acidosis. It can uh, alter and affect TCA cycle. It can suppress gluconeogenesis, and it can actually suppress fatty acid oxidation. So it causes a multitude of problems on other metabolic pathways. So we'll focus on the first two in this slide. So how does it affect glycolysis? Well, in the glycolysis pathway, there's a reaction involving glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate, and that reaction involves the enzyme GAP-DH, or glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate dehydrogenase. And this enzyme processes glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Now, this is a reversible reaction, and it requires NAD+, and um, the NAD+, gets reduced to NADH. However, in the case where we have too high or an excess amount of NADH, this can cause this reaction to go in the opposite direction, leading to increased glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So this can actually affect the glycolysis pathway at this step. And this ultimately reduces glycolysis. So what about lactic acidosis? Well, lactic acidosis occurs because pyruvate can be metabolized into lactate via the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. And this enzyme, again, converts an NADH to an NAD+. And because, again, we have high levels of NADH, this can push this reaction to the side of lactate, leading to increased in lactic acid and leading to lactic acidosis. The TCA cycle is affected at the level of malate dehydrogenase. And in normal TCA cycle functioning, malate is actually metabolized and processed into oxaloacetate. And in doing so, it reduces NAD plus to NADH. Now, during ethanol metabolism, the acetaldehyde is processed by the enzyme aldehyde dehydrogenase, which occurs in the mitochondria. And this leads to increased NADH in the mitochondria. So what happens is the increased NADH in the mitochondria will shift this reaction backwards from oxaloacetate to malate, leading to increased malate. And this actually will suppress TCA cycle function. Now the effects on gluconeogenesis are a bit more complex and require a bit more explanation. So this slide is actually from my gluconeogenesis lecture. So if you haven't watched that lecture, I would suggest you watch it um, to better understand this concept. So what happens is, in order to utilize pyruvate for gluconeogenesis, pyruvate has to be processed through a, several steps. And it does that by getting processed to oxaloacetate and then malate in the mitochondria. The malate then gets transported out into the cytosol, back, processed back into oxaloacetate, and then the oxaloacetate is processed into PEP, which then can be um, undergo several more steps and then finally can be uh, processed into glucose. Now, again, during excessive ethanol metabolism, we get high levels of NADH. The high levels, le high levels of NADH, again, alter this process. High levels of NADH in the mitochondria from aldehyde dehydrogenase reactions lead to an increase in malate in the mitochondria. But when we come out of the mitochondria, so if you pump malate back into the cytosol through the malate aspartate shuttle, there's actually also increased NADH in the cytosol as well from the alcohol dehydrogenase reaction, which takes place in the cytosol. So the increased NADH in the cytosol will actually cause this reaction to 
push back toward malate. So we are un unable to adequately process malate into oxaloacetate to be used for gluconeogenesis. So this means that ox cytosolic oxaloacetate actually decreases as well as PEP. So all of these actually reduce gluconeogenesis and this leads to hypoglycemia. So the reduction in gluconeogenesis function in the liver leads to systemic hypoglycemia. And finally, ethanol metabolism has effects on fatty acid oxidation and synthesis, and it does so because of the high levels of acetyl-CoA, which we've talked about before. So again, ethanol metabolism leads to high levels of acetyl-CoA, and this pushes the reaction of acetyl-CoA carboxylase to producing more malonyl-CoA. So the increase acetyl-CoA and increased malonyl-CoA will lead to increased fatty acid synthesis. Now, on the flip side, the increased malonyl-CoA will actually lead to an inhibition of fatty acid metabolism. So fatty acid metabolism actually decreases. This all leads to triglyceride accumulation in the liver, leading to fatty liver disease or hepatosteatosis. Anyways, guys, that was a lesson on the metabolic consequences of ethanol metabolism. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.